made a mistake, but let's correct that. Today, I'm readdressing a PE problem that I did in the past that I actually made a mistake on. Also, according to YouTube statistics, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Man, you getting spooky around here or is it just me? I feel like someone's watching me. So, if you end up liking this content here on this channel, consider subscribing. And lastly, spooky season is upon us and I am feeling it here in the auditorium. It's a big place. Sometimes I'm here locking up at night and getting that vibe that, I don't know, someone's watching me. I think Jose's just lingering around here late, but keep your eyes peeled. Let me know if you see anything strange going on. All right, let's go fix this problem. So some of you longtime team members, you'll recognize this problem. It's a few videos back in our PE prep journey. Um, but referring to the figure, find the maximum tension force at the bottom cord if the force is equal to 1,000 pounds, the force being applied at that point load at the center of the truss, as I've drawn in red. The length of the span is 20 feet, four at five feet. So that's four bays, five foot typical each bay. And the height of the truss is given as five feet. Height of the truss being this five feet. The unknown being what is the maximum tensile force in the bottom cord of our truss. And before, all I did was find the moment, m, which just equaled 1,000 pounds times 20 feet over four, which equaled 5,000 pound feet, and then divided that by d, the depth, which equaled five feet, to get us 1,000 pounds in our cord, both top and bottom, so in compression and tension, and that was our final answer. But for this instance, based on the orientation of our web members, so our diagonals, so these guys right here, and our verticals, these guys right here in green, this is not actually true. This is actually slightly conservative. What actually happens is if you do method of sections or method of joints, you do not actually get this as your final answer for the bottom cord. That's the key word here, the bottom cord. The top cord, you do end up getting 1,000 pounds in compression. So if we start over, let me go green here. What I'm gonna do is actually find we scroll up, reaction A and reaction B. So first we need to apply our three equilibrium equations to solve for our reactions. Summation Fx equals zero, summation Fy equals zero, and summation of moment equals zero. Well, for simplicity's sake, we can see that we really find uh, our sub A, just need to do Fy equals zero, and that's gonna be 1,000 pounds equals RA plus RB. So we have two unknowns still, so we need to actually go with another equation. If we take summation of moment, and let's say it's right here about point, we'll call it point A. So summation of moment about A is equal to zero. We'll have zero equals RA times zero feet, and we'll be calling uh, counterclockwise as positive and clockwise as negative. Uh, and we'll have plus RB times 20 feet. Then we have minus 1,000 pounds, which is our point load at the middle, times 10 feet. So the R sub A portion of the equation goes away. We have one variable we can solve get my big head out of the way, RB is equal to 500 pounds with a reaction upward. Then we plug it back in to our previous equation up above, and that gets us our sub A also equal to 500 pounds, the reaction pointing upward. All right, we have our two reactions, that's great. Now we can move forward with either method of joints or method of sections. 
For this case, I'm personally gonna use method of sections, but both can apply. Now, for this truss, all of our, I'll do it in blue, uh, horizontal web members are tension members. And if you're not able to pick up on that, that's okay because by doing method of sections, we will prove that they um, are tension members. But what you can think about is you have this force coming down and that will drop down through this vertical member and will basically push down at the bottom of the truss, which will then drag and elongate those two uh, inner bay diagonals and then subsequently create tension members because it will be stretching them, which will put them, uh, which will create tensile stresses within those members. Now, what this configuration does create is zero force members, and those are highlighted in yellow right here. There are no actual uh, internal stresses passing through these members that I've just highlighted in yellow. So ultimately, you could draw the same truss from a statics perspective, just like that, and it would still work out the same. Um, now, zero force members are still important. There's a reason that sometimes they can still be there. Um, again, from a statics perspective, you would say they're not doing anything, so why even have them? But in the real world, uh, they can be used for stability criteria. Um, they can be used in order to hang things off of. Um, so other components that would be attached to these trusses later, that's what they're there for. They could also be used in order to brace um, other members of that make up the truss um, so that you don't have any buckling issues of individual members of a truss. So there are, even though they're called zero force members and there's technically no force moving through the member, there are reasons why uh, they are present in trusses in typical design. Now, with method of sections, you can cut through anywhere along this truss to start solving. You can go right here, we'll call A, or you can cut through over here, we'll call B. I mean, you, you can cut right here, we'll call C. Really, you can cut anywhere along this truss to find internal forces of individual members that make up a truss. For us, let's go with cutting A. So that gives us the following. So this is what we have when we cut about A through our truss. So there's our A cut right there. Again, we'll use our three equilibrium equations in order to solve for our three unknowns, T1, T2, T3. I am denoting them all as tensile members right now. And basically, if we get a value that is negative, that means that that tensile member is actually a compressive member. Um, so that is a, a simple trick in order to start off, instead of having to try and figure out and guess which members might be compressive or might be tension members, you can just assume all of them are one or the other. And then as you get negative values, you then understand that it's the opposite of what you chose. And again, our question is ultimately looking for T3. First, I'm gonna take summation of moment at point N equals zero. And I'm gonna say N is right there. So you can take any point uh, at a joint, uh, anywhere you want in order to start summing moments about. The reason I chose here is because you have multiple intersections of uh, unknown forces, and that way they'll get crossed off so that you can um, hopefully be left with just a singular unknown that you could then solve for. So that's why I've chosen point N to start with. So zero equals negative 500 times five feet plus T2 times five feet, but we still have a horizontal and vertical component of T1. Now, since we have a five foot tall truss and five foot bays, we know that we have five, five, 45 degree angles for all of our uh, internal angles of our members, okay? Of our diagonals and everything. So the, let's say this is T1 vertical, and T1 horizontal, T1 vertical is gonna equal T1 cosine 45 degrees 
and T1 horizontal is going to equal T1 sine 45 degrees. That's SOHCAHTOA, that's trigonometry. Um, if you're not quite following along with that, take a second, work it out. But both of those right now for the summation of point N, we actually don't need, but we will need later. So hang on to those. Um, but for the equation right now, this is all that we need. So we can actually solve for T2. And T2 actually ends up being 500 pounds. And that's positive, which means that that is in tension. So I'm going to do a little T in parentheses here. Um, so that's a tensile member on your bottom cord, which makes sense. Again, right, if we go back to that uh, deep beam example and we're bending, if it's concrete, you know, you're getting tensile stresses at the bottom and that's why it cracks and that's why we put uh, rebar at the bottom of our concrete beams to give us tensile capacity in our beam. Um, and then at the top of our beam, we're actually getting compressive stresses. Um, so that intuitively makes sense. The bottom cord is experiencing tensile stresses and the top cord should be experiencing compressive stresses for typical downward gravity uh, loading criteria. Um, so there we are, that's technically what the question is asking, but what I do wanna show you is let's go a step further and let's solve for T3, which is the uh, internal forces on the top cord. Is it the same, is it different? When I did my previous approach of internalizing this uh, truss as a deep beam, I said that the uh, top and bottom cord forces were equal and opposite of one another. Let's see if that's actually true. I'm actually gonna say summation of Fy is equal to zero. And we can say zero equals 500 pounds minus, so uh, T3 and T2 are both just horizontal. Um, they're in the X axis, so they don't apply to this equilibrium equation but you have the vertical T1V uh, component of your diagonal member, which we did solve for above. That's why I said we're gonna be coming back and using it. Uh, T1V is actually equal to T1 cosine 45 degrees. And that's all we have for our equation. We only have the one unknown of T1, so let's solve for that. T1 ends up equaling 707 pounds. And again, that's a positive value. So that means that that's a tension member as well. Well, by doing that, now I have two solved and I just need to find my T3. So now I'm actually going to solve F sub X equals zero for our final equilibrium equation. And I'm going to say zero equals T3 plus T2 plus T1 sine 45 degrees. Because again, now you have the horizontal component of your diagonal member, um, but you have all of these added together and the only thing that we don't know is T3. So if we plug in for T2, knowing that T2 is 500, positive 500, and T1 is positive 707, that means that when we solve for T3, we actually get a negative value of 1,000 pounds. And since it's negative, that means that our original assumption of taking it as a tension member is actually a compressive member. So C parentheses. So this T3 actually transforms into, we'll call it C3 for compression. So from this example, using a method of sections, my original assumption saying that the top cord and the bottom cord forces are equal and opposite of one another is not unfortunately always the case. It's something that you can use as kind of a quick calculation um, to kind of familiarize yourself with, well, what roughly what should the number be um, when you're designing your cord members, but unfortunately it can't be taken verbatim. So I do apologize for that mistake. Uh, I'm trying to provide as much clear, concise and correct civil and structural engineering knowledge as I can, but hey, I am only human as well, and I clearly am still learning every day as well. What I'm really happy about is that it took fellow team members to step up and say, hey, we dug a little further and uh, we penciled out that assumption can only be used every once in a while. Um, so that I find really great because that's the whole point of this channel is to bring uh, a wider range of the uh, engineering community together to discuss with one another and make each other better. Through our failures, we're getting better. Now, with that out of the way, I'm turning the lights off, heading out of the auditorium. I've been hearing some strange noises. Um, man, 
I hope Jose is not sleeping in the auditorium again, but until next time, I'll see everybody later.